Hi, I'm Josephine Boxwell. Thank you for joining me for my virtual launch of my novel, Unraveling. A few years ago, I moved to Ashcroft, BC, which for those of you who haven't heard of it, is a very small town near Kamloops in the southern interior. And the landscapes there I, I found were fascinating. I, I loved hearing the stories dating back generations and generations of the many different people that have called that region home. And that experience really inspired me to write this book. Since this is a virtual launch, I'm actually going to show you a few photos of the things that inspired me. Unraveling is set in the fictional small town of Stapleton. It revolves around two main characters. There's Vivian, who's an older woman for most of the book, and Eleanor, who's a young girl. And their stories become intertwined when a sawmill explosion occurs, which obviously has a dramatic impact on the town. The extract I'm going to read to you today happens after the sawmill explosion in the 1990s. And Eleanor's experience in this small town has changed dramatically. She's trying to figure out where she belongs in this town that has begun to ostracize her family because her father's disappearance in this explosion is deemed suspicious. And there's one person in the town who has not ostracized the family and that's the manager of the local museum and her name is Mary. So this section involves Eleanor and Mary. Mary showed her a lace tablecloth brought over by a German immigrant and a set of silverware from Holland. She pointed at a photograph of a local ranch and told her it was started by a Mexican mule packer. It was the Mexicans who introduced alfalfa to BC, she said, but Eleanor wasn't sure what alfalfa was. Cows and hippies eat it, Mary replied. She pulled out a book of common prayer with ivory pages marred by brown age spots and a smell like old curtains. Eleanor was allowed to touch that one. It wasn't that old or precious. She stopped on a random page and flipped through pieces of Psalm 51. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. Church words, they were always difficult. Eleanor discovered a large tape recorder perched on a table behind the displays. We use that sometimes for group visits, Mary explained. Eleanor inspected it. She pushed down the chunky play button. An old man's voice crackled out, deep as tree roots, old as stone, and his words made more sense than the book of dusty prayers. The cowboss sent his boys out with the last of the snow. He'd seen some wild horses, winter weary, he said, they'll be slow. The boys rode through the timbers, quiet as night, they set their trap. They rung around those horses, being sure to leave no gap. Bill Hitchens went and done it. He came round much too wide left a big hole by the timbers for them hosses to run and hide. The cow boss stomped and cussed and spit, not one hoss to break and sell. He asked how they had let him down and the boss looked hard at Bill. Now Bill, he was the youngest, like them Bronx tough to train. The boss preferred his brother John, not as strong, but twice his brains. Bill quivered, sorry boss, sweat dripping from his brow, and John stepped up beside him, brothers even now. Boss, you should have seen it. It really ain't his fault. Those weren't no regular hosses that you can trap before they bolt. We set him up just perfect. We thought we had the herd. But when we rode towards him, they just up and flew like birds. Eleanor liked it. Families stuck together. That's what the old poem meant. She, imani she imagined the horses careering towards the cowboys and then heaving their hooves up and paddling up through the air like it was water. She wanted to be just like the horses in that poem and fly up high where the land looked beautiful and all the people became very, very small. She'd be a bald eagle, so grand that the people would look up and admire her as she soared over their heads. It was then that she saw it, a solution. They could live on a ranch just like Mary's family had, and Dad could work there too when he came back, so he wouldn't have to deal with the mean people in town. It would be peaceful for them there, just like flying away. They barbecue wild horses around here. No, they don't. Yes, they do. The ranchers don't like them scaring their horses, so they shoot them and make burgers and invite their neighbors over for a barbecue. 
Rob sat back with an ugly smirk. He wasn't supposed to be that way, not now. She hated the way he put her down when they were supposed to stick together. Thank you to Gunnaker Editions for publishing this book. And thank you all for watching this video today. If you would like to order a copy of Unraveling, you can find it on the Gunnaker Editions website.